Hi, I'm Kai Stotz. I'm the Director of Research for SAM, a space analog for the Moon and Mars at Biosphere 2. Analogs are means by which we can practice in a safe, controlled environment before we do the real thing. So you can think of a swimming pool as an analog for uh, practicing before you go to the ocean. In the same respect, NASA and spacefaring entities have used analogs for many years uh, as a means of testing spacesuits and procedures and equipment and technology before we go to orbit, before we go to the moon. So even without microgravity environment, we're able to do a lot of meaningful research within this, this particular analog environment. Uh, there are a number of analogs operating around the world, about 12 active Moon and Mars analogs today. And uh, Biosphere 2, which is uh, to, our, to our backdrop, was one of the, the first and definitely the largest and most audacious of those analog experiments back in 91 to 94. Our analog is unique from the others in the world today in that it's hermetically sealed, which means we'll be containing a pressurized environment and all of our air, water, inedible food, biomass, even our waste products, the human waste products, will be fully recycled. And that's the challenge that we're introducing to this analog world, is how can we step it up one notch to make it closer to the real thing? So if we're on orbit, if we're living on the moon or living on Mars, there is no way, means by which we can just open the window and, 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 and bring in some fresh air. Everything has to be recycled 100%. So we're able to do a lot of incredible research and bring us much closer to that actual moon or Martian habitat uh, through the research that we'll be doing here. The SAM is built first and foremost around the 1987 prototype called the test module. And that prototype was built uh, prior to and then operated during the construction of Biosphere 2. So it has a very similar stainless steel floor, has a similar space frame, and the means by which they sealed the windows against the internal pressure is nearly identical to what was used in the Biosphere 2. So from, two, from January of 2021 through June of 2021, we refurbished that 30-year-old structure and basically brought it back to fully functional state with a full pressure test of five people for four hours. We have since then, in this year, we've been expanding that pressurized environment to include a workshop and a crew quarters compo composed of a 20-foot and 40-foot shipping container, respectively. So we're in the process of combining those pieces into a continuous volume and then pressure, making certain that we can maintain a solid pressure through that expanded space, which is a really significant engineering endeavor uh, to maintain a zero leak policy or minimal leak policy within that space. So research teams will be coming from all over the world, not just the University of Arizona. Um, they can be academic, they can be professional, they can be commercial, they can even be private uh, research teams. So there's a number of different experiments that can be, can be conducted within an analog environment. Everything from food studies to um, personal psychology studies to chemistry and biology, a study of the microbiome, what happens to the microbiome as we have this, uh, a, a number of people, four people rotating through on a regular basis, how does that microbiome change within the confines of a sealed environment? We can do food studies, in, in other words, interested in what types of foods will both satisfy the human need uh, for nutrients and calories, but at the same time sequester the CO2, the carbon dioxide, and produce oxygen for the habitants. And that carries us into one of our most fundamental research projects, which is the transition from a mechanical or what's called physiochemical life support system into a bioregenerative life support system. So on the space station, the space shuttle, the Apollo program, all space missions by all, by all agencies and all nations have always been physiochemical, which means that we're using mechanical and chemistry uh, devices and technology in order to clean the air, to remove the CO2, to produce the oxygen, to clean the water. We're interested in the long-term solution, once we're staying on the Moon or Mars, not just for days or weeks at a time, but for years at a time, we have to move away from those mechanical systems in order to have something that's self-sustaining. So the Biosphere 2, again from 91 through 94, was an experiment in a purely bioregenerative life support system. What plants are required in order to fully support the human, again, for nutrients, for calories, and for cleaning the air and water. So we're going to be doing that in a microcosm, and it's not our goal to completely offset the physiochemical with bioregenerative. Our goal is to find a hybrid solution where we have both machines and plants running at the same time, and they're in a balance between each other and operating to both clean the air and clean the water and produce some edible food for the human occupants. So it's interesting that when we prepare to go to the moon and Mars and to become a truly interplanetary species, we're actually looking at the way we should be living on Earth today so much of what we do today is wasted. Something like 65% of all the food that starts at an agriculture rate, like a farm, 
gets thrown away. We as North Americans actually throw away more food than we consume on a daily basis in all the systems of transition, all the systems of avoid, choose to eat, not eat, and, and our failure to compost and recycle. When you're living in a Mars habitat, when you're living in a lunar habitat, you have no choice. That is not an option. Every single bit of protein, every single bit of plant biomass has to be recycled. There is no throwaway, there is no trash can, there is no, I'll just put it over there. So we have to design systems that fully recycle everything, including the broccoli stems that you don't want to eat, including the pizza crust that for some reason you don't want to eat. We have to find ways of doing that. So one example is that we take all of our inedible biomass, the stuff that we either cannot digest or that we choose not to eat, and we'll be drying it and then turning it into a powder with a, with, a, uh, with a grinding machine or a blender, and then feeding it to mycelia, to the root structures of, of mushrooms so that those can then convert that inedible biomass back into an edible protein, which we will then consume a few weeks later. So that's one of the systems that we'll be employing and also makes this particular analog unique over many of the other analogs that are available today. So when we look to the long-term vision of SAM, SAM is really, um, as I said, it's an advanced analog that has many years, a decade of research, if not more, that we can conduct with inside the facility. And we anticipate that those research teams coming in will have new ideas and new innovations and be pushing us beyond what we even considered might be possible within that facility. But as we look to actually becoming interplanetary species, we truly anticipate that what we're doing here today, tomorrow, for the next 10 years, will be used on orbit, on the moon, on Mars. We're not just doing this for the fun of it. We're doing proper research, proper scientific endeavors, and we're partnering with aerospace companies and with technology in the industry in order to advance our ability to become an interplanetary species. So we fully expect that the way in which we will live on the moon and Mars, some of those components will have their birthplace here. My personal hope for Sam is multifold or at least twofold. I'm of course excited about our species becoming interplanetary, about seeing us move beyond our home world and having that ability to look back and recognize and appreciate where we started from. But I'm also finding, like the original Biospherians, that my point of view, my, my point of, of uh, enthusiasm is shifting over the two, three years, I'm not, well actually four years I've been working on this, is that I'm as interested, sometimes more interested, in giving the next generation a better glimpse of how we should be managing our life here on Earth today. So again, everything we're doing in, in SAM, in the Mars Analog, is how we should be living in each one of our homes, each one of our apartments here today. So I think that if the research teams come in with their technology to help us become interplanetary, but they leave with a better sense of how to manage their own waste and their own consumption and their own, uh, uh, the way they live in their apartments and homes, that to me is, as, is equal if not an even better success story. My name is Luna Powell um, and I was a volunteer with SAM for a couple months um, and just switched over to a paid position. I work construction for Kai. Four or five months ago, I had just gotten back from the East Coast, living there for eight months, and I came back and had no idea what to do with my life. And I happened to know Kai, family friend, and he said, hey, how would you like to come volunteer with me? And I said, okay, I've never held a power tool, I've never done construction, I don't know anything about space, but sure, I'll give it a go. And uh, I volunteered for a couple months and uh, switched over to a staff position. Going into this project, I knew nothing about space. I knew nothing about analogs. I'd never met an astronaut. Um, and since this project, it's kind of opened my eyes to like this whole new world, or I should say whole new space world. Um, and it really, it does inspire me to live a little bit differently. Um, and I know that my generation is going to be interplanetary and that's so exciting. Um, and I also think that my generation needs to be focused on helping Earth as well because we're at a critical point um, in our lives and my future lives and my future children's lives um, where we need to start focusing on Earth a lot. I'm so excited to see the first team go in. I really am. Um, that's going to be an amazing moment for everybody, absolutely. Um, I'm really excited to see what kind of experiments people do and what kind of things that, what kind of information comes out of these because um, I think it can be anywhere from growing plants to looking at CO2 intake and everything and I think it's going to be really incredible to see where this goes. I think as Kai was talking about I think a lot of a lot of recycling and a lot of reusing um, and a lot of just getting inspired by science I think has been one of my big ones is that I you know had no idea that this was going on right I had no idea that there was analogs in the world and I would love my generation to know that because it is so inspiring um, 
and to just kind of see if you put your mind to it, you can create anything and you can go to the moon and you can go to Mars. And um, I think that that's going to be really incredible.